Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam Ivey, doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. Welcome aboard. Um, I want to give a quick shout out at the beginning of this. I should have put this in the comment line, and I am, in fact, going to edit, uh, not the comment line, the description. I am going to edit the description, if I remember, and it's 50-50. I am going to edit the uh, the description to read this. How many of you have followed my show since the beginning? Uh, no, don't all of you raise your hands at one time. Um, one. Yep. One guy way in the back. No. Uh, take take no. Take, take the heroin needle out of your arm. It was you, right? No, the guy in front of you. Gotcha. Okay, one person I'm talking to here. Okay, I'm such a big celebrity. and <laughs> Maybe not. Um, how many of you have watched the show since the beginning? I have ripped the city of Canton, Ohio, where I live, apart. They waste money every year for helicopters to fly all over the Hall of Fame city. They were doing this before 9-11, so don't tell me 9-11. My ass. They've been doing this forever. Okay, I live here. Don't tell me. I know. They waste so much of our tax money on that. Guess what? They didn't do that this year. I would like to thank the new mayor who at the parade I kind of gave a joking boo to. But let me tell you what. Good job. Good job, dude. I didn't have helicopters in my sky like... Like Al Qaeda is waiting to mug Joe Montana or something. Thank you. Okay, uh, I felt safe. There, there was a police presence. You know what? The police didn't bother anybody at all last year. Go look it up on my site. I stand by it. They pulled somebody over right in front of my house, and I filmed it because I thought it was utter BS. You know what? I did hear about. I, I heard about a checkpoint which I'm against, and I don't know if it happened because I didn't see it. So if there was a checkpoint there, I am still against that, but I didn't see it. So I can't comment on it. I need some kind of proof. It's not the correct view, uh, correct opinion. It's the correct views. If that happened, I'm still against it. But I didn't see any unnecessary checkpoints. Um, my brother and Christelle, we were waiting to go and see Aerosmith. And we couldn't get across the street because the light wouldn't change. And we're hitting the button like crazy. And the reason we don't just risk our lives is because a cop is sitting there. Finally, and it wasn't me. It's usually me that says, forget it. I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. It wasn't me. This other guy started walking through the red light, whether people liked it or not. And I followed him. And the cop watched us. I don't think he was particularly happy that we did it. No tickets given. Then, Christelle didn't have a ticket. Long story, but she didn't have a ticket. So the police, the auxiliary police, auxiliary police of Canton, Ohio, thumbs up, I'm talking to you. She was carrying a sign that says, I need cheap tickets. And the auxiliary police officer read her sign and told her that they were selling them up on Blake Avenue the last time he patrolled there. It's been a turnaround. And I'm not just going to hate on police because they're there. Unless that checkpoint is true, and again, I don't know. Thank you to the new mayor. Good job, cops. Good job. From the correct views. Thank you, mayor, for not wasting our money. This show's not going to be around hate and authority just because I want to be, uh, I want to, I want to get clicks. And if it makes you mad that I spent three and a half minutes, four minutes now complimenting police, then that's fine. Because I've spent hours talking crap about them, and they did a wonderful job. Thank you, police officers. You finally got it right. Mayor, you finally got it right during Hall of Fame week. People might actually want to come back to our city now and spend money. Good job. All right, guys. Dailymail.co.uk. Um, this is... This is a topic that I have been incredibly interested in since I first heard about it. And... I'm going to get into Trump, I'm going to get into the fast food win, I'm going to get into all the political stuff. And if, if you're not listening live, if you're listening live, you are trapped. <laughs> if, you're, if you're not listening live, scan ahead. I honestly have looked into the 
evidence surrounding the fact that the universe is a simulation. I've been looking into the facts and uh, the studies, and I believe it. I believe. Now, d don't argue with me until you can at least tell me what the two slits experiment is. Um, I don't want to bore people that know, but I'll put it into 30 seconds or less. The two slits experiment says that on a atomic level, at a very, very tiny, tiny quantum level, real tiny, everything acts like water at any point that something is watching it. And do I mean, like, these toenail clippers? Do I mean, like, metal like this? Yes. All solid matter is scientifically proven. This isn't um, Christianity. This isn't Islam. This isn't Judaism. This is scientific fact. Look up the two slits experiment. There are people that will explain it much better than I did. But how did I do? For those of you that know what it is, come on. How did I do? Okay, um, everything looks like it's not solid at any time that it's not observed. That includes cameras. I know this sounds metaphysical and it sounds like something you'd see on weird or what, but no, this is, it, it's, I, I promise you I'm not lying to you. It, it's fact. And I was amazed when I heard it. Do you remember the, the, the Bible said that God created everything? Well, how could God create everything? There's like a trillion planets. You know what? I never knew. I've always been Christian. That's a long story. I have another. I'm not going to double bore you. I'll just bore you once. Okay, how's that? Um, I've always believed it. Didn't know how. Do I think it's possible that the years were, that the days were not literal days? Yeah. Because he didn't create the sun right away, so we didn't have a day. So the first day couldn't have been a day. Because the sun wasn't created yet, so what are you going to base a day on? But let's say for the sake of argument, like the fundamentalist Baptists do, that they do believe he created it in seven days. <clears throat> well, I'm like the worst C++ programmer in the history of C++ programming. I promise you, no matter how bad you are, I'm worse. I'm worse. A, a, a C and a D is how I passed it. I'm a designer. I'm not a programmer. I'm not going to lie. I cannot. Syntaxes, I, I can't learn them. I just I can't. If you give me seven days to create some kind of a tiny universe in C++, I could maybe pull it off. Maybe if I really, really tried, I might be able to do that. Okay, what if I was God and I did it in seven days? This proves whether or not you believe in the literal seven days or not. I don't, but I don't think it's a hill to die on. Um, if nothing is real as we know it, and this is what this is what the two slits experiment proves. <clears throat> it proves that what we consider real isn't, and we don't know why. People like me use it as proof <clears throat> because it lines up very well with what the Bible says. People that say, Sam, you're the worst Christian ever. You are right. Um, people that say, Sam, you should not be speaking for Christianity. You are also right. Third, those of you that simply want to hate Christianity because you don't like it, fine. Then consider this one amazing science story. You know why? Because this is one very amazing science story. I don't care if you believe in uh, worship the mighty green moon cheese men. It doesn't matter to me. This here is amazing, and I'm leading off with it. And everybody waiting for the Trump stuff, I swear to God, if you didn't get enough from Fox and you didn't get enough from CNN, I promise you I'll give you all the political you need. But I will bore you to death with political just listen to this, because I promise you, whether you're a Christian or an atheist or a Muslim or a Buddhist or the moon men or worshiper, this is going to be interesting. Again, dailymail.co.uk. The year is 2050, and super intelligent robots have taken over the planet. Again, it's hypothetical. He's using an analogy. 
Except you have no idea because you're living in a computer simulation depicting life as it was in 2015, which is when this is being recorded. Everything you see and touch right now has been created by robotic overlords who are using humanity as playthings in their virtual game. It's clear that this writer didn't believe in God, and you know what? That's fine. That's the radical theory put forward by a number of scientists over the years who claim there is a possibility that our world is not real. And I love that because everyone's, you know, what, what in the world does that mean? What in the world does that mean? Just listen to this. It's a radical theory put forward by a number of scientists. This isn't like a fringe thing. It's just that, again, they never used the word God. That was me. It's a, I told you at the beginning it was commentary. This here is the reporting part of the show. This is what we know whether or not we believe in God as I do or not. It may sound ridiculous, but the simulation argument is being taken seriously by physicists who say that they could find evidence that confirms it. Robert Lawrence Kuhn, a writer and host of Closer to Truth, recently explored this theory in an in-depth report featured on Space.com. Again, I, I don't think almost anybody in this article that I'm talking about, and I'm not going to speak for them because I could be wrong about any and or all of them, my guess would be that a majority of the people that are giving you the science do not believe in God. I told you. He notes that according to Oxford University philosopher Nick Bostrom, the scenario played out in the film The Matrix could be a reality. Is it easier to believe in The Matrix than it is to believe in God? I'm, I'm just saying... Instead of having brains and vats that are fed by sensory inputs from a simulator, the brains themselves could also be part of the simulation. In other words, uh, according to Bostrom, and I kind of agree, what if nothing is real? You wouldn't know that if you were part of what wasn't real. Uh, and again, I, I can't give C++ code consciousness. I'm lucky if it ran well enough not to crash your computer. If you doubt me, ask DJ Aram from A Passing Time. But, literally, I can snatch defeat from the jaws of victory if you let me program anything. However, are you willing to tell me that whoever programmed the Matrix, and I would call that God, uh, likely, uh, whoever programmed the Matrix didn't know how to either give you a soul or make you think you had one? I mean, you wouldn't even really think you had to have one. If the creator or the programmer, if you like, said that you had a soul, then that, that's what he named it, that's what you have. Uh, and maybe it doesn't stop. Maybe, you know, maybe, it, we're running into complete maybeville here. What if, uh, you know, that's what's promised to you with the consciousness that you're given? I mean, if, if it's God and or atheist fans, don't tune out, the great programmer decided that that is what you were to know, then that is what you are to know. Um, how many of you have played Roller Coaster Tycoon? I was thoroughly addicted to that game in ways of which you'll never know. To this day, I don't play it because it'll happen to me again. You can build walls where no matter how much your little simulated people that were riding your coasters went, they could never get through the wall if you build it right, and that was part of the game. They could never get through your wall to know what the new coaster was. That's, it was a video game, for those of you who are nerds like I am. The same thing seems to be applying here, of course, on a much grander scale, obviously. A grander scale than Roller Coaster Tycoon? Could that be? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this would be something that was the creator of all that is. And since nothing appears to be solid, and again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up the two slits experiment. This could be how it, this could be how everything is, how everything works. This, uh, it would be one big computer program simulating everything, including human brains, down to neurons and synapses. Kuhn also points out how physical laws are sets of computational processes with patterns in nature revealing an inherent intentional model. Marvin Minsky, a founder of artificial intelligence, told Kuhn it would be very difficult to distinguish that you are a computer simulation. 
What's that mean? Just like it would be very hard for your little uh, roller coaster tycoon guy to break down the wall you built between uh, him and the new coaster. He says, unless the programmer has made some slips, if you notice that some laws of physics are quite right, or if you find rounding off errors, and for those of you that know about programming, it means that things that look like they would go on forever really wouldn't. Several years ago, Silius Bean at the University of Bonn suggested to Kminsky that there may be signs that we are living in a simulation. All we have to do is to identify what these constraints would be, he said. It is to build our own simulation of the universe, which is close to what many researchers are trying to do on an incredibly min minuscule scale. And he says that um, it means the universe as we know it is actually a computer simulation. If that's the case, then there ought to be a cutoff of the spectrum of high energy particles. In other words, it could only go on for so long. In the simulation, the laws of physics have to be superimposed onto three-dimensional objects, for those of you that want the scientific term. In other words, he's saying that there are ways that you could tell that it is, in fact, a simulation. And it just happens that there are exactly this kind of cutoff in energy in cosmic atoms, a limit known as the green, as the greasen zepsin kuzmin uh, let's be the uh, G-Z-K for those of you like me, uh, you can look it up. Basically, it's saying that all the things that you would expect to find in a simulation is, in fact, the things that we are finding in the constraints of our own universe. And that I would find to be very interesting, whether or not you're a Christian or not. That is mathematical fact, and I really wanted to lead off with that. I want to hear about Trump. I want to hear about Trump. Okay, okay, okay. Flashback. Donald Trump calls for execution of Edward Snowden. This is by Mikhail Phelan. It's August 10th. He, and this is what Trump said. I think Snowden is a terrible threat. I think that he's a terrible traitor. You know what we used to do to traitors, right? I would hope that everybody that is subscribed to this show is, uh, for the most part, a supporter of Snowden. Snowden has done more for the American people than he'll likely ever get credit for until long after he's dead. And they'll be putting his face on coins a uh, hundred years from now. If there's an America that's not completely taken over. If there's a free America, they will remember this man. Um, think about what he did. He, he had, a, he had a, I don't know, a wife, girlfriend, something, I'm sure. Boyfriend, maybe, but I don't think so, okay? But I want to be politically correct. I wouldn't want people to tune out. He had a significant other. Likely a girlfriend or wife. Hope I didn't offend. I know, can't use those words. Um, he had a really good paying job. Um, he, he had a life. He had people that he grew up with. In order to let you know, that your Fourth Amendment rights and many other constitutional rights that you were born with, that were God-given and promised to you by birth, by the Constitution, in this country, they were being taken from you by letting you know that. He now lives in Russia. He doesn't know anything about Russia. They've checked his background. He's not a Russian spy. Of course, everybody thought he could be at first. No, he's not. He doesn't know anything about Russia. He knows his lawyer. He knows anybody that might have cared enough to come to Russia and live there and or visit him and who could also afford it. He lost his job. I wouldn't be surprised if he lost said significant other. And he did it for what? For what? To let you know that America is spying on people. That our country is hurting the stability of liberty and the stability of the whole world. That's what he did. And he, he did that at great peril to himself. And this is why, and I, I want to give a shout out to all the people in the Making Friends with Donald Trump and a, a few other Trump sites on Facebook, and they don't like us libertarians, but a few of us libertarians are not completely closed-minded to Trump. 
I've said repeatedly that I think Rand Paul is running a terrible campaign. Terrible. Um, rather than attacking Trump for what he's done wrong, it's making Rand Paul, who I believe would be a better president than Trump, it's making Rand Paul look shallow. It's taking away from the fact that Rand Paul and Donald Trump have a very similar tax idea. They agree in many ways on illegal immigration, but not in ways that are significant. Neither of them are for amnesty, so they're not as different as you would think. Um, they both have a very strong stance on being separate from the normal GOP stance on things, such as the Rubio Jeb crowd. Rather than focus on how these were Rand's core ideas his whole life, he's going after the way Trump talks about things, he's attacking Trump, and he's looking shallow, when what he should be doing is saying, you know what? We're not that different. You guys know Trump because he's on the show. That's great. That's great. Congratulations. Listen to what I'm doing because it's not that different from him. But I've been doing this forever. He's new at this. You know, you could do this in ways that doesn't make you look like the uh, the band that just lost the Battle of the Bands contest. Well, I'm never playing here again. You know, it's, it's really making Rand look bad. And that's who I'm likely going to vote for, Rand Paul or Gary Johnson, just to put it out there. But my problem with Trump is this kind of thing. He's not necessarily the friend of liberty that we want. If it comes down to Hillary or Trump, as it stands right now, Trump, if uh, it looks like already I can't stand either one, then it's going to have to be Gary Johnson again. I'm not even going to lie. I really like Gary Johnson, whether or not he's third party or not. I'm proud to put an X by his name, for the most part. He's wrong on immigration, but that's another story. Presidential frontrunner Donald Trump called for the execution of Edward Snowden, the hero that I just told you about, during a 2013 appearance on Fox and Friends, labeling the whistleblower as a traitor for disclosing the National Security Agency's illegal activities. You know, spies in the old days used to be executed, Trump said. How do you like that? I don't like it either. Since Snowden first revealed the NSA's widespread surveillance practices more than two decades ago, the hotel tycoon has repeatedly called for both the death and imprisonment of the former intelligence contractor. <clears throat> Only days after his initial comment, the reality TV host again repeated his desire to see Snowden put to death during the follow-up interview on Fox News. So this isn't something that he has changed his mind on. He says, I think he's a traitor. He's a terrible traitor. And you know what we used to do in the good old days when we were a strong country. You know what we used to do to traitors, right? Trump asked. Or we used to kill them, Donald. Fo uh, excuse me, Fox host Eric Balling responded. And although Trump is currently facing criticism for reversing his stance on multiple issues, and again, to pause, being a commentary show, I don't have a problem with him being a, a Democrat that went Republican. That is what Reagan did. And Reagan was probably the best president that I've seen in my lifetime. So that's not necessarily bad. Because the party changed, not uh, the person. But it said the real estate magnet has remained consistent in his disdain for Stone, who's a hero. I wouldn't have been brave enough to do what he did. I, I, if, if I had, I would have at least made sure I got my family out first. He didn't. He just did it. It says, early last month during an interview with CNN Anderson's Cooper, I could see myself getting mad enough to do it. Trump again referred to Snowden as a total traitor, pledging to deal with the whistleblower harshly as president. If I were president, Putin would hand him over. Well, you know what? That might be, Trump, why many of us are very hesitant to hand you over to the White House. Adam Salazar, PrisonPlanet.com, woman claims sexual assault after cops perform body cavity search over marijuana. 
Um, one of the highest viewed shows I've had in uh, this show's history has been where I talked about the poor woman who they suspected of a DUI, who they literally, without knowing if she was even a hemophiliac, attacked her with needles to draw her blood against her will. We've talked about the, the, the body cavity searches on the side of the road that we have seen before. This here, this is something that you would, you, you'd swear to God, I'm talking about ancient Rome. I'm talking about Sieg uh, Heil. I'm talking about Stalin or Mao or uh, even uh, what Boudicans. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the, the Roman Emperor. Caligula. It means Boudicans. Um, no. This is America. This is, this is wonderful news. Not. A woman in Texas is claiming sexual assault after a routine traffic stop turned into a body cavity inspection at the hands of the local county sheriff's office. I feel like they sexually assaulted me. 21-year-old Jarnesia Corley says, I really do. I feel disgusted, downgraded, and humiliated. Corey of Spring, Texas, says she was pulled over by Harris County Sheriff's deputy on June 21st while on her way to purchase medication for her mother. The deputy told Corley that she ran a stop sign, but then noted he smelled marijuana in her vehicle and asked her to step out. Handcuffed in the parking lot of the gas station, Corley sat in the back of the deputy squad car until he completed a search of her vehicle, which came up empty-handed. In a twist, the deputy returned, it says, to his patrol car and insisted that he now smelled marijuana. Of course, always some reason. Curly waited for the female deputy <clears throat> to be summoned and conducted a more thorough search. <clears throat> she tells me to pull my pants down, I told her. I said, ma'am, I don't have any underwear on. She says, well, that doesn't matter. Pull your pants down, Curly said. According to Corley, the female officer grew more aggressive and threatened violence for non-compliance. Now let me pause. How many of you were so quick to throw uh, a Bill Cosby under the bus? Maybe he did it. Maybe, maybe the women were just high and they had sex and they were all using drugs and shouldn't have been. Do I think he did it? I have no idea. I, I don't really, I have no idea. But if he did, that was terrible. And everybody now hates him. Why is it okay for police officers to force a woman's legs open and ram their fingers into her body against her will? Why is it okay for them to do it and not Bill Cosby? You always hear that celebrities get away with anything, right? Well, it looks to me like police get away with a lot more. Unless, of course, you know, Bill Cosby wasn't a celebrity, and I just imagined watching him my whole life. It says, she throws me on the ground by my car and tells me, open your legs. I told her, no, I'm not going to open my legs. So she says, if you don't open them, I'm going to break them. Does anybody remember Bill Cosby threatening to break anybody's legs? Because I, I, I didn't read a lot of it. Maybe I missed it. I'm not saying forgive him. I'm saying why aren't we condemning this a lot more? I bend over and she proceeds to try to force her hand inside of me. I tell her, ma'am, you cannot do this. A distraught Corley recalled to KTRK News. And all I could do was just lay there and I felt helpless. Well, Corley says at no time did she give officers any consent. A Harris County Sheriff's spokesman says an arrest report shows that she told officers she would undergo a strip search if she needed to. Yeah, I'm sure people just say that. People automatically volunteer for strip searches every day. We live in a stupid country, but we're not that bad off yet. Maybe soon. Corley's attorney, Sam Kamak, says there's no question that conducting an unwarranted cavity search at a gas station in full public view was a violation of their civil, their client's civil rights. How sanitary is it? I mean, everybody talks about how unsanitary Planned Parenthood is. How sanitary is it to do a strip search on the side of the road at a gas station? I, I don't know. My dad was a nurse. Maybe it's just me. But it doesn't seem to me like, well, that would be a good sanitary idea. 
It's and again, of course, he knows whether or not she has any cysts, right? So him putting his fingers up there, there's no risk or anything, because he's also a psychic as well as a medic, right? It's undeniable that the search is unconstitutional, Kamek told KTRK. I would imagine. Corley was subsequently charged with possession of marijuana and resisting arrest, a charge with which KTRK not notes is at odds with the department's claim that she gave consent to the search. They found .02 ounces of marijuana on her, though it is not disclosed where it was found. So if she had it hidden in her twa, she probably did not consent to a search there, for one thing. Second of all, .02 ounces? I don't even know if that's a joint. I don't think it is. I, I really don't. Last year, a Texas state trooper was sentenced to a year in jail and fined two grand after a judge found she had violated two women. Well, this person needs to be put in prison and uh, put in the same cell block as uh, child molesters or at least rapists. This, that's an awful story to report on. All right, guys, I got three more left, and uh, none of them are quite that bad. I swear to God, on a stack of Bibles. Um, well, at least I hope not. Um, how's that? I want to give a shout out to StickerJunkie.com. Make your own stickers at StickerJunkie.com. They made these passing time stickers, and if you want them, you better get them quick. I can't tell you why, but you might want to do that. Uh, get a hold of me at the correct views at Hotmail.com. You can get these stickers, and who are they made by? They're made by StickerJunkie.com. We're selling them for a dollar a piece. You can get them made there. Let in the, when you make your order, make sure they know you heard about it from the correct views, because when you do. David Lake is going to give you an amazing price on these stickers, I promise you. And uh, while you're online, look up the writings of Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. He writes poetry, political commentary, vampire novels, a little bit of everything. Make sure you look him up and say, hey, Mike McLaughlin, I heard about you on the correct views. All right, guys, CNBC.com, and this is wonderful news for me, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Wendy's ditching chicken antibiotics in new test. Many of you know that I hate GMOs and I hate fast food. One of the reasons is because I absolutely love to eat fast food, and with my hours, I can uh, rightfully say I, I sometimes don't eat properly due to what's open. Like, I had toxic hell today. And again, they're going to be taking their artificial ingredients out. We reported on that earlier. Search Taco Bell, the correct views. Well, my favorite fast food sandwich is a spicy chicken Wendy's sandwich with only cheese and light lettuce, preferably Asiago, regular American, or hot pepper. Swiss works too. The trouble is, the food is GMO death. It is some of the worst food you've ever eaten. Well, this is wonderful news for those of you that like fast food and hate what it does to you. Fast food restaurant chain Wendy's is testing antibiotic-free chicken items in a handful of markets as it evaluates a broader move away from antibiotics in the meat. Its current antibiotic plan bans antibiotics, but not all. Wendy's policy strictly prohibits the use of antibiotics that are medically important to humans. For the purpose of growth promotion, we believe that antibiotics used in livestock and poultry should only be used for prevention, control, and treatment of disease. If we can get more of the antibiotics out of the food, that means that when you have to take antibiotics, your body will react better to them when you need them too. And in order to take antibiotics out of chickens, and you have to make sure the chickens aren't grown so closely together that they can't move, they're living in their own crap and stuck in a fence forever or cage. So it's very nice for a number of reasons that they're moving in this direction. Uh, way to go, Wendy's. Now give us some organic spicy chicken and we'll be even happier. Uh, NewYorkTimes.com. This is for dear old dad, my next to the last story. He loved uh, the Andrews sisters. And I always do the entertainment section at the, um, at the media speaks. Well, I wanted to make sure I gave her a proper burial. Uh, she lived a lot longer than dad. Poor dad uh, went out at 68, as did mom. Uh, Patty Andrews, singer with her sisters, is dead at 94. Patty Andrews was in the, uh, in the Andrews Sisters. You think you don't know who the Andrews Sisters are, but you do. Yes, you'll know the song in about, well, I'm going to say five seconds. 
and uh, it's the only, one of the only times it ever had lyrics, which is rare. Really, really old, yeah. Why? I'm always reporting on like Exodus or uh, some new band like uh, uh, the Black Keys or something. No, 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 no. We're gonna go ahead and give her a, a, a goodbye to one of the Andrew sisters. Uh, from the days of swing, how many musicians are even alive from the days of swing? Like the original ones, not like the squirrel nut zippers who are alive, but I mean the swing ones. Well, you better be about 94 years old. Patty Andrews, the last of the Andrews sisters, uh, the jaunty vocal trio whose immensely popular music became part of the patriotic fabric of World War II America, died on Wednesday in her home in L.A., and of course she was 94. Linda Wells, a niece, confirmed her death. And of course, you know, Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy from Company B and Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree, and of course, Rum and Coca-Cola, one of my favorites. Um... <laughs> She was a soprano. She was the the more upfront lead one, and uh, they, they had times when they didn't do so well. Uh, they had arguments among themselves at very various points. At various points in the career, after selling seventy five million records, they broke up in fifty three. Patty went solo. In uh, fifty six, they were together again, but the taste had kind of gone towards Elvis and that by then. Uh, Laverne Andrew died in sixty seven of cancer, and no replacement was found. Nineteen eighteen, friends. That's that's a lot, and uh, it talks about, of course, them writing "Be Mirror Bis Duchesne," and she'd stayed uh, active through most of her life, even when not with the Andrew sisters. So for those of you that really know your music history, uh, come on, I had to give you something after the police rape story. And friends, that brings us to the dumdy, dumdy, dumdy of the day. And of course, how better to do it than to give myself a dumdy? Yes, I give myself a dumdy. I wanted to get to this at the uh, dunce cap of the month that I did uh, Thursday. 